A warm welcome to the boulevard home of Hull FC. A very hot welcome is guaranteed for Leeds. Hull supporters have never quite forgiven Gary Schofield for leaving the boulevard for Headingley. And fresh in their minds is the aftermath of Leeds' last visit here in November. Ellery Hanley's jaw was broken. The referee didn't see it. Hull's Andy Dannant was banned for eight matches after Leeds reported his tackle to the league. So today's action could be fierce. But then between these two, it always is. There's a lot of um, feeling between the two clubs and, uh, and I'm sure the people of today are going to in for a great uh, afternoon. They're only human. They must remember the incident when Allery Hanley got the jaw broken. Yeah, but I, I don't think that'll have any bearing on the match. That was... Um, it was before Christmas, so there's a lot of water under the bridge since then. But as I said, the, the Hull and Leeds matches are always special because, you know, there's people like Gary Schofield's an ex-Hull -Hull player. Um, and, you know, they, they're a flamboyant side and we're, we're a grafting side. The visiting stars got a friendly enough reception when they arrived, but for many fans at the boulevard, there's nothing quite like putting one over Leeds. I'd like to beat them more than anybody else. Why is that? Because they spent too much money and they've got Gary Schofield. That's why. They'll win today. Better do. <laughs> do you think yeah. Janet was hard done by? Well, it was, uh, I don't think it really his fault, was it? I mean, it's just part of the game, isn't it? And the best revenge would be to beat Leeds, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Hull bring Brian Blacker into the centres in place of Paul Harrison. Blacker was sub in the 8-4 Challenge Cup semi-final defeat by Castleford. Terry Smirk, a scrum half, played his first game for three months, with Greg Mackey reverting to stand-off because Steve McNamara played for Britain's under-21s in France on Friday. And Steve Durham is in for his first full game since September when he broke his arm. Leeds have John Gallagher at full back for the first time this season because Morwin Edwards has a shoulder injury and Phil Ford's in the Welsh team to play France. Dave Heron, who came on as substitute for Gary Divorti in last week's home slaughtered by Wigan, starts the match this time. And we'll be pursuing the question of head-high tackles, which may be in the minds of some people here. We've had a big response from you, a selection of your views later in the programme, plus the big second division game between Sheffield and Leeds. It's going to be Gary Schofield getting things underway for Leeds and David Watkins. Will the events of November and the Regal Trophy still be in players' minds? I think not. They will be in the minds because of the press, but uh, the players will be too uh, uh, wrapped up in what they have to do this afternoon to win by the side. And it was John Sharp. First into the action, taking the pass from Terry Smirk. And a drive forward from Russ Walker for Hull. Andy Dannett, met by the large Leeds reception committee. Peter Spring and misunderstanding with Terry Smirk, who of course hasn't played for three months. Hanley. Certainly nothing that Henry Hanley would like better today than to prove on the field what a fine player he is. Referee this afternoon is Dave Carter from Widnes. Discussion with Brian Blacker. And the result is a penalty to Leeds. Please choose to gain some yards. Sean Wayne and losing the ball and a chance for Hull to escape. And rather than let off there, chance for Leeds to exert some early pressure. And a fist, I think, there went in. And credit to one or two of the Hull players there who leapt in to try to make sure that that didn't build up into an ugly incident. I said it didn't have any... Uh, uh Effort, effect on the players, but already we've had three incidents. Dannett running with the ball, hit by four people. Elry Hanley then tackled by three or four. And of course, this incident now is another penalty. Three penalty offences for people coming in after the tackle. Well, let's now hope that after those early incidents, the players have got anything untoward out of their systems and we can get on and enjoy a game of rugby league in what are absolutely perfect conditions for it. Richard Gay. Looking to get the ball away in the tackle, just unable to. And Leeds certainly have one or two things to set straight here at the Boulevard, although, of course, they did have that Regal Trophy victory back in November. That's a well-judged kick. 
And Greg Mackey, very much the man who makes Hull tick, wearing the number six shirt this afternoon, in place of Steve McNamara, who was in action for Great Britain's under-21s in France on Friday night. Yes, that was the first positive thing, really, at Hull have done. They've made a number of handling errors, and their players really haven't been in the right position to take the right pass. Paul Eastwood, looking for a chance to run. And Hull inside the Leeds 25 for the first time in the afternoon. Side decision against Leeds. I rather think David Creaser may have been the offender. And an early chance, surely, for Paul Eastwood to put points on the board. David Creaser. So, Paul Eastwood, the wrong side for him from an ideal point of view as a left-footed kicker. But it doesn't worry him. Hull, two points in front. Well, that's a positive start from Hull because they've been far from positive in their lead-up to any of this at all. And uh, uh, that will be a good reward for them because they really want to get as many points as they possibly can. Heron. David Heron, delighted to be back in the starting 13. Bobby Goulding, Schofield, Goulding again. Gallagher, with the ball in his hands almost for the first time, I think. Gary Schofield. And Leeds on the last tackle. Schofield giving the signals. Goulding, the little cross kick. Well taken by Lee Jackson. And Richard Gay. And he has support from Eastwood. Who's Eastwood going all the way? Schofield racing back. Gallagher going back. And Gallagher's there first. And that'll do him some good, certainly. But we're still in the action with Jackson. And no support for Russ Walker as he turned, ready to give the ball out of the tackle. There was no one to his right. But Leeds concede the penalty anyway. And Hull, after a good run, will have a chance to add two points to the two they already have. Let's just watch this now. It was a superb run here. It was a superbly timed pass to him in the first place by Jackson, the hooker. And then the ball was brought inside. Good play by Eastwood by coming back inside. But look how well Gallagher lines up his man. Schofield's coming across, obviously, to assist. A superb tackle from behind. Schofield comes over on the top, and that stopped what would have been a certain try. So, Paul Eastwood, two points already to his name, and now it's four. <laughs> Disappointing for John Gallagher after making such an excellent tackle to find that his team, in any case, concede two more points. Two tackles. He's got past Gallagher. Gibson comes back and was sure and had to be. But Neil Turner there seemed to be no possible way through for him. Well, it has to be said, it was poor defence on the part of Leeds. They just didn't close down the man. They allowed a wing to come across the field and open up the middle of the field. And now a penalty quickly taken. The referee not happy with it. Defence stealing the ball in the tackle. Greg Mackey, and in the end, we end up with a penalty to Leeds because Mackey argued. Well, this is it, uh, Turner comes across the field here, now he just stops really and straightens up, and I mean, it really was bad defensive work on behalf of Leeds, there were two, three, four players there, Gallagher then misses him because he goes on his outside, but Gibson comes across, and Scopey yet again, it must be noticed, was making that try saving tackle. Scopey the long pass out to Hanley. Creaser with him, flings the ball out to Dixon. Dixon to Gibson, and both teams certainly willing to keep the ball alive. Must be 
Who's that leads are a little too predictable with their passes at the moment. Three and four men are shepherding one man out. Another long pass again in this win. It really does put the defence under pressure. And Gallagher's done really well to pick A, pick it up, and B, at least survive the tackle. Certainly wouldn't have thanked his colleagues at all for the ball that he saw coming to him then. And Leeds on the last tackle. Only ten yards from their own line. And how will fancy their chances? Long pass flung out to Bentley, who did well to hold it. Ennis tries to fling the ball inside. Eastwood there to mop up. Leeds contrived to make 40 yards, not very tidily. Here's Ronson. There certainly is no pattern to the game at all yet. Uh, people are just doing things instinctively, just running here, running there. And it, it really is a little... Uh, rough as far as the rough on the edges there's no tactical plan at all to either side the referee says play on leads knocked it forward Hull have it with Jackson Mackey Peter Spring that wasn't planned either he just arrived and it's certainly rather scrappy to say the least Peter Spring has uh, apparently been breaking all the weightlifting records and the whole training sessions, getting himself fit again, after arriving mid-season from Australia, is John Gallagher. Heron. Just a half break, and Innes could be away as he got the pace to get past Eastwood. No, he hasn't. Hanley in support. Can Hanley make it all the way? Richard Gay going back. Hanley must be there, I think, the momentum carried him over. And Ellery Hanley, on the ground where he broke his jaw back in November, has got the perfect kind of revenge. Such has been the game that either side could score at any given time. There have been defensive lapses on both sides. But this really was a good run here by him because he held the ball well enough for Innes to come on his inside. It was a poor tackle, it must be said there by Dannett, he missed him completely, Eastwood looked as if he had in his, Ellery Hanley is always backing up, now this is superb because it's grit and determination as well as his speed that takes him out of the tackle and into the corner. He'll be 31 on Friday, Ellery Hanley, and he's still one of the most difficult men to catch. What, what more could you ask for really from a, a player, captain, coach, that was superb stuff really. Now, John Gallagher kicked eight goals in his only appearance for Leeds this season. And not able to make a successful start this afternoon. But the scores are level. Well, this was a good move right from the start. It was a long ball out, and Heron half dummy to Innes, but held it up long enough for him to come back inside. It must be said the tackling was poor, but Eastwood catches his man. But Ellery Hanley, what a superb athlete he is. He kept going. Even the tackle couldn't stop him. Well, if Leeds wanted an inspiration, really, Ellery Hanley has given them just that. That was a superb try for his. Pass slipped by Scoville, but Wayne just couldn't break the tackle. I just wonder, at the end of the afternoon, whether we might look back for the turning point and decide that was it. Who knows? Long way to go. Here's Craig Innes. And right in front of the touch judge. Confrontation between Eastwood and Maskill, and before that, involving Ronson. And let's, let's just have a look at this, because there's been a lot said about head-eye tackles. He comes inside here now and pushes off the one man. And there was no doubt at all that was upstairs. It'll be interesting exactly to see what the referee does in this instance. Just a lecture. And a penalty. We don't see the sense of that. The linesman came on, he saw it as well. The referee was then told about it and nothing again has been done. That is the sort of thing that uh, frustrates players and supporters who see that as inconsistency, but of course, it would be a referee. Cavill Hugh on the burst. Gary Schofield. The leads suddenly look more lively, more full of options. Gallagher almost breaking the line. 
and he's certainly a useful attacking weapon to have. Heron. Goulding can hold on, no he can't. And Lee Jackson's away, Mackey, Brian Blacker, David Ronson, and Ronson surely will go all the way. Paul Eastwood says, it's all yours, mate. And it all came from a Leeds attack that broke down. Well, what a remarkable game this is turning out to be. I mean, uh, this was a bad mistake again. Man lying on the floor, the ball goes down to the ground, and straight from this situation, the length of the field is covered. Goulding had no chance of taking that, collecting that pass at all. Lee Jackson again to the forefront, back inside of Blackett. Now he slips the ball out here, or is he going to go himself? That's the question, he's closed down as well. And suddenly it's David Bronson who's away, realising that the cover can't get to him. Everyone on the halfway line is cheering on the lead side, on the hull side, I beg your pardon, and Bronson goes under the post. Great credit to the Hull colleagues who were there in support of David Ronson there. Plenty of men on the shoulder, and they made the break count. Paul Eastwood's already kicked two that looked trickier than this. Can't believe this will trouble him. No problem. And Hull lead by ten points to four. And just when it seemed that Leeds were beginning to assert themselves, suddenly one mistake, and Hull are six points clear. Yes, it hasn't. Neither side has really dominated at all. It's been a mistake on either side's part that have uh, let the tries go. It must be said, Leeds did manufacture theirs from right quite a long way back. Another fist flying there. Steve Durham failing to hold. The ball took a fist, play goes on. Let's just see what happens here. Inside he comes, the player goes up, he's not back on the floor. And meanwhile, leads it away, and Gary Schofield, the irrepressible. Hanley's already scored, and now Schofield against his former club. There's an argument going on. There's a player on the deck. It's all happening. Leeds certainly wants some Gary Schofield magic and his superb sidestep inside the defence. And despite the covering three Lee Hull players, Schofield scores in the corner. But something certainly has happened here because the Leeds players now rush in. The referee gets there quickly and Schofield obviously doesn't know himself just what happened. Meanwhile, John Gallagher from the touchline. And that will be short, caught by the wind. And the score remains Hull 10, Leeds 8. So we're going to see, for the first time in the Stones Bitter Championship, the appearance of Rob Wilson. Young man from West Hull. And Gary Schofield has dropped back to the fullback role just for the moment. While he perhaps clears his head. I'm wondering if that's a wise decision, really, because uh, they are now defending, and it would have been uh, silly, I think, to leave him on when you're having to defend. When you've got the ball, it's not so bad, because you know exactly what's happening with the ball. No well, addiction's been there. There are one or two vendettas going on out there, it seems to me. Paul Dixon involved not for the first time. Lying as though absolutely collapsed. Down Dannett goes into this tackle, he pushes off and he turns around Spring actually, Spring it is, down he goes on the floor, he tries to get back up now to play the ball. But behind all this of course, the incident has happened. Andy Dannett and Paul Dixon head off for ten minutes in the sin bin. Well it certainly all happens to Andy Dannett when he plays against Leeds. His uh, tackle, of course, wasn't punished by the referee when Ellery Hanley's jaw was broken in November, but he ended up with an eight-match suspension. This time, it's a ten-minute suspension. So, five minutes from the end of a half that's been full of incident, Paul Eastwood attempts to maintain his 100% record with the boot. Kick is 
good. And Paul Eastwood is in great form with the boot at the moment. And he is the third top point scorer in the rugby league. An important one to kick just before half time. It takes the uh, lead away now to another four points. Richard Gay again almost breaking through the first line. So quick over five or ten yards. Mackey. John Sharp. Spring. Such a strong man. So big. Able to hand off with one hand, loose the ball with the other. Here's John Sharp. Flacker. Couldn't get the pass out to Neil Turner. Carl on the last tackle in injury time at the break. Crucial phase. John Sharp's kick. Underneath it, Schofield and Hanley was there to help out, and Hanley gets the touch. And he was a key man in attack earlier in the half. He was an absolutely key man in defence there. Yes, that was a superb piece of uh, covering by him then. Schofield was uh, dwarfed then by two big hull players coming to pick the ball, and of course. Uh, Ellery Hanley was there to take the ball himself and make sure it was safe. Taken by Richard Gay. Rob Wilson, former West Hull player, arrived this season in the professional ranks. Lee Jackson, Richard Gay, he fancies chances from there. I fancy his chances from there. He's been threatening to do that for the last 10 minutes. This player has stood out, uh, Richard Gay, like a beacon all the game here. This is a, obviously a work move. He comes back inside here, Gay does. And look how he moves outside the defence. He doesn't go straight, knowing that he had to be hit by tacklers. He came outside Gary Schofield, drew the defence right across. That was a superb try by a player who really is making his mark in the game. It's 20 years since Hull last had a Great Britain fullback, Arthur Keegan. I wonder if we're looking at the next one. I wouldn't bet against this being the last kick of the half. We are three minutes into injury time. Paul Eastwood, straight between the middle. It is indeed the last kick of the half. Hull, ten points clear as we go into the break. And Richard Gay with a moment of shining quality right at the end of the half that enables to wipe out the early advantage given to Leeds by Ellery Hanley. Previous with a half-time scoreboard that shows tries by Ronson and Gay for Hull with five goals already from Paul Eastwood. Tries by Hanley and Schofield for Leeds. At half-time, it's Hull 18, Leeds 8. Join us again for the second half in a couple of minutes. Hull 18, Leeds 8, the half-time score. Leeds with much to do in the second half. We can get a view from the Hull camp, a man who'd certainly be playing today, but for the fact that he was on duty with Great Britain under 21 in France on Friday. Steve McNamara, he's on the touchline with Brendan Foley. Steve, you must be sorry that you're not out there yourself. Oh yeah, a little bit disappointing, but no, no thought with this playing in France Friday night and all the travel. So he's had to have a week off this week. Still 18-8 at half time. Things are uh, pretty much as, as you could have hoped, I think. Well, yeah, we had a great start to the game. And, you know, I think just for a little bit, 10 minutes halfway through the second, uh, first half, we lost our way a little bit. But back on the rails now, and uh, we've got two excellent tries. It's pretty lively out there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, there's a few uh, a few incidents going on, on out there. But, you know, it's part of the game. And other than these games are always uh, good matches. And... I think the second half's going to be a real good half. So everybody confident that you can hang on to this lead? Well, yeah, we, we've had the breeze first half, and I think we have dominated the game. No, this half, we're going to have to control the ball more, especially against the wind, and uh, play out sets of six. Steve, thanks very much. Back to you, Nick. Thanks, Brendan. And we're back underway with Paul Eastwood. And as Goulding tries to kick leads back downfield, we have some substitutions to bring you news of. Leeds have brought on Paul Anderson, who is making his presence felt straight away. Paul Anderson actually was the Great Britain Man of the Match on Friday night against only ones. And there, wearing the hole in the 14 shirt, is Mike Dixon. And he is on in place of Richard Gay. 
Well, that certainly is the quickest I've and seen anybody come and go off in the field. In absolutely. My life. Paul Anderson, how long did he have? About 30 seconds. And already he is off to the sin bin. Man of the match for Great Britain, under 21, on Friday night in France. Substitute for Leeds and straight back into the sin bin. Extraordinary match. I think both uh, coaches will have had a lot to say uh, at half time. Uh, Hull, despite their lead, would have been told by Newell Cleaver, who's a realist, that they still have a lot to do. And of course, Leeds have the wind with them. What can they do? We shall see. Very interesting 39 minutes of rugby league ahead of us. Let's have a look at the statistics of the first half. Leeds taking the scrums 4 to 3. And one against the head, one by Hull's Lee Jackson. Eight penalties conceded by Hull, five by Leeds. And the handling errors, Leeds making one more, Leeds eight to Hull seven. But you have to say that there were many other errors. Passes being thrown behind the man. And now Greg Mackey is in some trouble. But we're back in the action with John Sharp. I'll have Andy Dannett in the scum cap in your picture there. Back in the action, interception by Schofield, and he was almost away. Credit to Peter Spring, who got him around the ankles. Paul Dixon. And again, surging through Hanley on one shoulder. Hanley, oof, just in front of him. Otherwise, Ellery Hanley was in for his second try and certainly a chance gone begging there for Leeds. It certainly was, that was a superb break by him then, I really should have either hung on to it then in that situation just to keep the momentum going, it was a poor pass out to Elry and he had no hope of catching it and that certainly was, as you said Nick, a chance lost. Just got overexcited I think with the prospect of seeing Hanley at his shoulder and he's just too keen to get the ball out now it's Hull's turn Mackey again the ball going to ground. This time it's Hull who are guilty. Schofield. And that's inviting Gallagher to run. Now Gallagher is quick. But Eastwood had read the danger, and Eastwood will be there first, and in fact the ball just beating everybody. But John Gallagher certainly has the pace to cause danger from kicks like that, and Gary Schofield is the ideal man to set up that kind of opportunity. Well, he certainly is. It's a wonderful tactical move, because there's no doubt at all about it. When a defence comes up as quickly as Hull are trying to get up amongst the lead side, to kick that over the top really does start putting people back and giving you more time to work out your own moves. And here, for the first time, is our first look at Stuart Arundel. There is a Cass Castleford lad signed from York. And there is Bobby Goulding, who's gone off to be replaced by Arundel. Smirk. Walker, Dixon, Wilson, Northfield has great hopes of this young man, Rob Wilson, Mike Dixon, Lee Jackson, the two hookers together, Greg Mackey, John Sharp. He's got two tackles. Chances here. Can he get the ball out? No, he can't. Good covering back by Creaser. John Gallagher, as he brought down inside his own line, just this side of it. Dixon gaining ground. Crowd felt that uh, some of the whole arms were high there. They didn't make contact. Anderson. And certainly the intensity of feeling has not lessened on the pitch. Well, that's 
the way as uh, Gary Scovey does to relieve the pressure. His defence is under a lot of pressure then, forcing him out of the tackle, trying to run it out, taking a lot of energy out of you. And by kicking the touch, it means you gain 40 yards and really say conserve so much energy to run with the ball next time. Doug Lawton just hidden partly by the ball boy there. Must be wondering whether the kicking tactics that Gary Schofield has employed so promisingly at the start of the second half will bring some reward. Richard Gay is back in the action and Terry Smirk has gone off. And I think that may just improve the whole balance. There's Terry Smirk, his first match in three months, ending prematurely, if it has ended, but of course still come back on. Just under lines for you how important it is with hole fifth from bottom that they do win today. It's Neil Turner trying to hand off Gibson. Support for Gibson came from Fisa. Lee Jackson. Now then, what can Hull produce from here? Mike Dixon. Dixon almost got away. Still chances with Mackey. Kevin Hugh back to nail him. But this is the most promising Hull move for some time. Steve Durham is back in the fray for Hull. In place of Walker. Mackey in possession. Andy Dannett. Rob Wilson. And Wilson Burring, is he all the way over? Yes, he is, on his debut. Well, a killer blow, this for Leeds, because this is what Hull is their first real attack. They've kept them all moving well, superb stuff. And I mean, look how he struggles out of tackles. Poor defence, yes, we might ask, but the effort is there, and Wilson scores. What a try. This would take Hull almost out of sight. So he is human after all. Nonetheless, five from six. A good afternoon for him and Hull lead by 22 points to eight. Leeds teamwork had been good, but this was really Hull's first pressure on the Leeds defence in the second half of anything. And Wilson's speed, strength and aggression and the willingness to want to go forward takes him over for a great try. That's a day he'll never forget, that's for sure. Noel Cleal favours the lofty vantage point, which uh, his predecessor, Brian Smith, used to use here at the Boulevard and indeed Hull's fixture against Leeds in the league a year ago was Brian Smith's last game in charge before Noel Cleal took over. Greg Mackey, busy little customer. The interception by Carol Hugh. He's got Bentley outside him and no one will catch John Bentley, I don't think. Indeed, they won't. John Bentley, who's hardly seen the ball afternoon, gets his one chance and takes it. Well, we talked about mistakes, and the game certainly has been full of them. And the opportunity came here for John Bentley. The pass was intercepted by Cavill Hill. He put Bentley away. There really was no hope of stopping him. And that, in contrast to much of what we've seen, was done with great efficiency. So, is there hope for Leeds yet? John Gallagher can, can land this in the confidence of eight points. That's a good kick from John Gallagher with the pressure on him. And Leeds aren't out of this yet. 22 to 14. Just see the mistake. Mackey goes through here, stepping high, throws the ball inside. There was no hope of anybody else taking it apart from the Leeds player, Cavill Hill. Now, he didn't quite know what to do or where to go, but sensibly, John Bentley came up on his outside. He saw the defence had no hope, and he really cantered in at that corner. It's 
Schofield. And even Gary Schofield has been fallible this afternoon. Ironic cheers all round the ground where he used to be the home favourite. At least he's got a try to take back with him, but he'll sacrifice that, I know, for two points. And the two points, without question now, are going the way of Hull FC. And they might just have a perfect finale. But John Gallagher back to cover. Now, what can Gallagher do? And the Hooter goes. The whole arms raised in the air. There are a few teams they enjoy beating more than Leeds. Rob Wilson will remember this day. A try on his debut. Paulies with also a scorer. And Richard Gay with a try to crown a devastating period for him personally towards the end of the first half. Disappointed Leeds faces Emery Handley with the try on the ground where he suffered a broken jaw four months ago. Paul, two very crucial points for you out there this afternoon. Definitely, yeah. Um, it's two points we had to get today. And I think the boys showed, you know, that after last week's semi-final disappointment, the boys are back. So, the final scoreboard, Hull with tries from Ronson, Gay and Rob Wilson on his debut. Five goals from the man we've just seen, Paul Eastwood. Leeds replying with tries from Hanley, Schofield, the late one from John Bentley. The difference was that they managed just the one goal from John Gallagher. It's Hull 22, Leeds 14. And David Watkins, where was the match won and lost? Well, the early stage of the second half was Leeds' best spell. Dixon Brake should have given Hanley a try. But despite all their efforts, it was Hull through Wilson who scored on their first concerted effort. And from then on in, it was uphill for Leeds. You know, just what the doctor ordered, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a pretty comprehensive display. You know, um, I thought as far as we were professional, we, you know, we, we were a little bit indisciplined in the first half and maybe a little bit over anxious or a bit too liberal with the ball. But, um, you know, in the, at the end of the day, it was a fairly comprehensive performance. Gary, you never have found it easy coming back in the league against your old club, and today was just the same. Yeah, that's right, Nick. Uh, I think I've come back here eight times. I've only won once that was in the, um, the Regal Trophy just before Christmas, but it's always out at the boulevard and, uh, you know, but we didn't take our chances and they did and, you know, <coughs> we made a lot of basic errors. you got to try again and again finish on the losing side. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, uh, it's always nice, I suppose, to score tries, but, uh, you know, <coughs> we want to make sure that we're getting league points to uh, have a good chance of premiership and, you know, we're not disappointed just as much as everybody else, but uh, I say we'll try again at Wakefield next week. And overall for you, that was a big step towards safety, wasn't it? Well, I'm not looking at safety, Nick, I'm looking at top eight. 